It is so good to be with you as we worship today, as we praise God, as we sing together, as we pray together. <coughs> On this first Sunday in June, it is a communion Sunday. It's also our first Sunday back in worship in person without masks, if that is your preference, with masks, if you are back in, in, in service together. It is, it's a day. It is a day. It's our second Sunday in Kingdom Tide. It's our first Sunday where we have outdoor worship. All kinds of things are happening. For some, it's your first Sunday post-graduation. It's all kinds of things we are marking today. So it is a good, good day to gather together whether you are in person with us or online with us. So, friends, there is so much going on. I invite you to make sure you take a look at your bulletin or your worship guide. Fill out the Connect form, um, your Connect card, if you are someone who likes paper. We have them in your bulletin. If you want to go digital, you can use it on your phone. We have it pinned to the top of the online worship um, experience. So there's all kinds of ways. If you want your pastors to be praying over something, you can put that in there or on there. There's all kinds of ways to connect. Um, next Sunday, we are going to be recognizing our graduates. Um, don't worry, we're not going to put you on the spot too much. If you're here, I'm just going to be um, saying prayers and blessings over you in all three worship experiences uh, for those, so we just come to the one that you normally would come to. And also, in between services, so after the 8.30 service, you can pick up breakfast to go, or after the 9.30 service, you can pick up breakfast to go for a donation, and that will be supporting our Freedom School endeavor. Um, we're going to use this time, since we didn't get to have a Freedom School this summer, to get a leg up on the fundraising for next summer. So that will be a great way to support that mission endeavor. So if you want to know more about that, you can connect with me or uh, one of the Freedom School supporters. Um, we can give you all kinds of information about that. Um, check out the things that are in your bulletin, and there are all kinds of things that are happening as we are slowly opening up and expanding ministries and getting things rolling again. Big breath. Are you ready to worship together, friends? Let's still ourselves and receive the gift of our prelude that Mary and Jordan is going to play for us. How great thou art.
stand for our call to worship, please? We gather to give thanks to you, O Lord, with all our heart. We will sing your praises before all creation and rejoice in your steadfast love. You have created us, O Lord, and made us for yourself. In you we become everything you have made us to be. Amen. Let's sing together, God of grace and God of glory, number 577 in your hymnal or in your worship guide. Friends, we have quite a bit on our prayer plates. There are a few things that I know of. I've been watching the prayer chains, and even though I was gone this week, you know that I was praying right along with you, that my heart was joined with yours. Um, we have a number of friends who are um, in hospice care, that we've seen those prayer concerns come out, and we also have friends that... Maybe it's not common knowledge that they are in hospice care. And so please just be praying for those. Um, pray for those who are in the midst of transition. Even if you don't know them or know who they are, God does. And just hold them and their loved ones in your prayers. I ask also for prayers uh, for my brother um, and sister-in-law. They are going to have their first baby this Wednesday. Hopefully all goes well. They'll be induced. 
Um, so I know that that is happening. He had a big anxiety attack this morning, and so he, he needs some extra love. Um, he's going to be a daddy. I can't believe the baby is going to be a daddy, but that's a whole other story. Um, so lots of prayers for that. Um, last month was Mental Health Awareness Month, and so we, we do lift up those folks who are, um, who are struggling um, after coming through the pandemic and still dealing with a lot of that. Um, we, we do have a lot of residuals, so we, we hold people in our prayers and in our hearts. Um, we, there's a lot of brokenness in our world, and we continue to pray for folks who are experiencing that in, in, in all kinds of ways. Um, there's a lot going on in our community, um, in our nation, and in our world. There's a lot of sickness. We continue to pray for our friends who are in the hospital and those who are recovering, those who are battling cancer, those who have um, a lot of heart issues in the last few weeks as well. Um, so there's a lot going on. There's also a lot of joys. Um, so we we lift up those, those things that give our hearts wings, and we give God thanks um, for the highest of highs um, as we deal with what's in the valley and in those times in between. So, so much, and we are in this together. So let's pray. Oh, God, thank you so, so much for this community of love in this place and beyond, in the places that we find ourselves, whether we are at home or at work or here at church, whether we're listening on the road or we're listening right now. Maybe we're listening and tuning in later, but Lord, our hearts are connected to one another and, Lord, to you. We lift up those things that we have mentioned, as well as those things that weigh heavy on our hearts, those things that maybe distract us, from giving you our full attention. We give you those things that make us giddy with happiness. New babies, new jobs, new opportunities, new houses, new beginnings, great weather, sunshine. And Lord, we, we give you those things that make us pause. A conflict, a question, conundrums, worries, illness, injury. teenagers, our parents, our grandkids, those things of the in-between. Lord, we give you those things that break our hearts, those things that scare us those things that make us anxious and worried. We give you our sadness, our depression, our aches and pains, our illness and disease, our doubts, our anger. Lord, we 
give you this big box of random. Because that's who we are. That's, that's how you made us. We feel all these feelings. What a good gift. But we give it to you because we know you'll sort through it with us, that you are in it with us. And we're so grateful. Thank you, Lord, for being beside us, for holding us close, for encouraging us, for holding us for rejoicing with us, and for wiping away our tears. God, you are amazing, and we are grateful. So, Lord, in this time of worship, we pray for a refill of your Holy Spirit, a refueling of your courage. We pray we could take it out into the world with us that we could reflect you in all the places we go. Fill us, Lord, once again with your Holy Spirit. We pray this, and we pray with confidence that prayer that you left us oh so long ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. morning. Am I on? Yes. Okay. Hold on one second. Achoo! Bless sorry. you. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Have you ever had a cold? Raise your hand if you've had a cold. A sneezing, watery eyes, coughing, cold, runny nose. Yeah. I don't have one. I just was pretending. But I did have one earlier this week, last week. I had a cold. And it lasted just about two days. I felt really bad. And uh, right about the time I was ending with my cold, my daughter Molly got it. Mm. And she, hers lasted for a couple days. And then Jonah, my son, got it. You guys were sharing everything. His lasted for a couple <laughs> days. And then my dad got it. He's got it right now. Why did that happen? Why did that happen? I don't have children in here other than you two, and I won't pick on you, but I need to hear answers. Why do you think that happened? Yes, we passed it on. That's right, from one person to the next to the next. It was because I was, it's a big C word, it's a long word. Contagious. contagious. That's right. I was contagious, and then Molly was contagious. And when we think about that word contagious, it's uh, usually associated with bad things like a cold or the flu or coronavirus. But did you know that some good things can be contagious? Like have you ever been in a situation with someone where they started laughing and laughing and laughing and the next thing you know, you were laughing too and you weren't even really sure why? It was because that laugh was contagious. And laughs are good. Mm -hmm. um, in the Bible today, we are reading in the book of Acts. And it's just one verse that I'm going to read you. One little quick story. Um, but something in this little story was contagious. See if you can pick out what it was. And I don't have my glasses on. It says in Acts 2, 
verse 42. Uh, I lost it. Those who, were, who had accepted this message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. 3,000 people accepted God and the story and were baptized. What was contagious in that story? What? Baptism. Baptism was contagious. God's Holy Spirit was contagious. God's Holy Spirit was passed to 3,000 people. That's a good thing that's passed along that's contagious. Um, Jesus taught his disciples that he, he wanted them to uh, pass along the Holy Spirit. And they started telling other people around them all about God and about Jesus. And then told them, taught them to, to pass it along. I think it's easy to pass something like a cold or even something like laughing to someone else. But it takes some learning, some learning to be able to pass on the Holy Spirit. And God taught his, or Jesus taught his disciples how to do that, how to catch the Holy Spirit, and then pass it along. What are some ways that we can pass along the Holy Spirit? I think when, when the Holy Spirit is passed from person to person, we are passing God's love and his blessings and his healing and his wisdom and God's joy. And so... Sometimes when we are passing along love to someone else or even kindness to someone, it feels good to be, have somebody be kind to you. And that Mm -hmm. makes you want to be kind to someone else. And when you do that, you are passing along God's love. And I think that that is exactly what the end of the Pentecost story tells us. The best way to pass along the Holy Spirit is from person to person to person. And that's a great daily lesson. Can we say a prayer? Dear God, thank you for giving us your son. And thank you that Jesus taught his disciples how to pass along the Holy Spirit. And help us, God, to do the same. To pass along your Holy Spirit from person to person to person. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Sarah. Now, friends, we are still observing some of those safety protocols, so um, there were still baskets in the back for you to put your tithes and offerings in. Some folks are still sending them in. And so I will, um, we will have our uh, musical offering, and then I will pray, and then we'll sing our doxology. So, um, Mary Ann Jordan is going to play um, as her offering, Morning Has Broken. And I didn't know that that was going to be her offering today. And that's the song that was on my heart this morning when I went out to let the dogs out and saw the gorgeous morning. So the spirit is moving. We are so connected. Amen, sister. (laughs) Receive this gift.
you may be seated. I'm so glad we had fresh batteries up here. <laughs> Friends, our lesson this morning is once again from Acts 2. We jump right back in to where we left off at Pentecost. Uh, Pastor Jason did a great job of bridging us back into this conversation around the Holy Spirit and the gift, the outpouring, and what we do next. So it's a bit of a long lesson, but it's one worth hearing again and again and again. So sit back, hear this word. Don't get too comfortable, though. Um, it is a long lesson coming to us from Acts chapter 2, verses 22 through 45. Hear this word given to us. In Acts. <clears throat> you that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know, this man handed over to you according to the definite plan and for knowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside of the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand so that I will not be shaken. And therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul in Hades or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on the throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke. Of the resurrection of the Messiah saying he was not abandoned to Hades nor did his flesh experience corruption this Jesus God raised up and of that all of us of that all of us are witnesses being therefore exalted at the right hand of God and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit he has poured out this that you both see and hear. For David did not ascend to the heavens, but he himself says, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart. And they said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, and to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe 
came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the good will of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. We pray with me. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts everywhere be acceptable in your sight, O holy God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So today we've picked up in Acts in the middle of the highlight reel of Peter's sermon that fateful day. Of Pentecost. Now we've been talking about the Holy Spirit for a couple of weeks now, listening to, listening for, receiving, obeying. We've been tasked with discerning how the Spirit is at work in us, in you, in me, in each of us, in the entire body of Christ. We've been given paper doves, a a minuscule reminder, um, something that can remind us to be thinking about discerning, listening, praying about this task of paying attention to what the Holy Spirit is doing among us. And as we listen to today's lesson again, we see God's mighty acts. We hear the prophet's words unfolding, we see scripture being fulfilled in Jesus Christ, and we see the Holy Spirit at work. So maybe this leads us to wonder, just like it did the folks back then, what do we do now? What do we do now? That's where it led the hearers of Peter's sermon the first time. They straight up asked him and the rest of the apostles, what do we do? And Peter told them, remember? Remember what he said. Depending on the translation, the wording may be different, but the gist is the same. And, and my favorite phrasing, of course, is from the message. I think I've shared this with you before. Peter said, change your life. Turn to God and be baptized, each of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins are forgiven. Receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is targeted to you and your children, but also to those who are far away, whomever, in fact, our Master God invites. And he went on in this vein for a long time, urging them over and over, get out while you can, get out of this sick and stupid culture. Sound familiar? Because I kind of lift this up a lot, don't I? I might sound like a broken record. My kids think I do. But further along in Peter's sermon, we learn a little bit more. After they were baptized and after they were brought into the fold, they committed themselves to the teachings to life together, to the common meal, to the prayers, to taking care of one another, to live in harmony. They held everything in common. They pulled their resources so that each person's needs were met. They followed a daily discipline of worship, and every meal was a celebration, and every day their numbers grew. Did you catch that, friends? Did you catch that? Now, last week, Pastor Jason brought us a good word. I listened. I was watching. I was worshiping. 
And something that really stuck in my heart for the week was the distinction that he emphasized between condemnation and conviction. Isaiah, if you'll recall, began to protest God's call on him because of all the reasons he was unworthy. Remember, I am a man of unclean lips. And God remedied that just like that. Remember, he was cleansed and he was sent. And then in Jesus' conversation with Nicodemus, we're reminded that God did not send his son into the world to condemn it, but to redeem it. Does this sound familiar, friends? Yes, Pastor. <laughs> yes, yes it does. <laughs> God did not send his son into the world to condemn it, but to redeem it. World redemption, not world domination, but world redemption. And as we hear this week's lesson through that filter, it becomes so much clearer, doesn't it? As Jesus followers, as modern day disciples, we're not here for world domination. We're not here. We are here. And it is clear why we are here. What do we do? We continue the mission. Not of world domination as our sick and stupid culture would have us think. And if you want to say amen, please do. I can see a lot of you are nodding your heads. Yeah, 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 you hear it. That, that's the Holy Spirit speaking to your heart. We are not about world domination as our culture teaches, but of world redemption as our Savior teaches. We continue to change our lives by turning to God and receiving God's forgiveness. Now, I have a question for you, friends. How many of us struggle with forgiveness? Now, some of us struggle with forgiving others, and some of us struggle with forgiving ourselves. And I will take just a moment to remind you that you have been forgiven already. We prayed about it earlier. We come to the table in just a few minutes to celebrate that forgiveness, to bask in that grace that's been given to us. I don't know why we struggle with it so much but we continue to change our lives by turning to God and receiving that forgiveness from God. We continue to learn to receive the Holy Spirit. The Spirit finds new ways to come to us, to get us to pay attention. Just like we get used to sights and sounds and smells, we also get comfortable in our buildings and in worship. And the Spirit often has to come and shake us up a bit. It's true. We continue to commit ourselves to the teachings of Jesus. And friends, I think this might be where we get hung up just a little bit. Because we learn a few things and we think that we have mastered the class. You know what I'm saying? Um, I got a new driver in my family, a newly licensed driver, and he thinks he is all that. He, he tells me all the time how to drive now. I taught that boy how to drive. He's a good driver because I taught him, but come on now. We've had a few classes, and we think that we have mastered, right? We learn a few things, we think we've mastered the class. We do a study here, we listen to a sermon there, we think we've read a prayer, a book on prayer, and we good. Pastor Jace is almost finished with his masters, his masters of divinity. Do you think he'll be done then? Nope. <laughs> I have my master's of divinity and my master's of theological studies. I'm working on my doctor of ministry. You think I'll be done then? No. 
Pastor Bob is retired. Do you think he's done? No. Bishop Palmer. Do you think he's done? No. We're, friends, we are, we are lifelong learners. Say that with me. We are lifelong learners. Because as soon as we think that we are finished, as soon as we think we have it figured out, we know that we are wrong. That's just the way it is. The religious leaders of the day thought that they, that they had cornered the market on truth. They thought that they had it all figured out. They thought that it was done. They thought they had arrived. So when Jesus showed up, they were threatened. When the Spirit began to move, they were stymied. And when God acted on humanity's behalf, they didn't know what to do. So we commit, we continue to commit ourselves to the teachings of Jesus because we are lifelong learners. And in that same vein, we continue to commit ourselves to life together because we aren't done and God is not finished with us yet either. Even when it's difficult, we are committed to one another because we've made vows, friends. We made baptismal vows. We made membership vows. We made promises. Even when it's difficult, I am going to annoy you. And you are going to irritate me. That's just the way it is. That's, that's what we do. And when you do life together, when you work and play and pray and eat and build and study and learn and grow and cry and laugh, when you do all this stuff together, when you do life together, it happens. Church is a family, and family sticks together. We work through the, di through the difficulties, and, and we're going to argue. We are going to get on each other's ever-loving last nerve sometimes. Go ahead and look at your neighbor. It's true. Even if that neighbor is your spouse, go ahead. Or your parents, or whatever. But our love for Jesus and one another is strong enough to withstand the hardships. And there, of course, are times when it's no longer healthy to be together, but that is also discovered through a, a mutuality and discernment and prayer. We don't give up on each other just because things are hard or because our politics don't line up. We don't let petty things of the world divide the body of Christ but we will not allow intentional harm or abuse to occur in the family. Do you hear me, friends? Family, loved ones. We will continue to commit ourselves to the common meal and to the prayers. As the body of Christ, we are bound together in prayer and communion, which is why we are considered family. When we partake in Holy Communion, we are joining a long line of believers who have come before us and the long line who will come after us. We are joining in the chorus of whispered prayers through the generations. Prayers for peace and connection and health and wholeness and salvation, and redemption, and deliverance, and stability, and everything under the sun, the moon, and the stars. We are connected by the bread of life, and the cup of salvation, and the prayers of every grandmother and grandfather of the world. How amazing is that? So when we look back into the book of Acts, when we step back into Peter's sermon and we hear that question from the new believers 
what do we do? We look to the future and we think about the past and we know without a doubt what we're going to do even as we go forward. We're going to commit ourselves to follow Jesus just as we've been called and convicted and redeemed to do. Let it be so. Let us pray. Gracious, holy, awesome, amazing God, thank you. Thank you for the gift of self that you have given to us in Christ Jesus. Thank you for the gift of your Son, of your Holy Spirit, of this time of worship, and of this time of table. We come knowing that we have so much to learn and you have so much to teach. We come knowing that we are broken, but you are the healer. And we come knowing that we are not perfect, but you are, and that your grace is more than enough. So God, we thank you and we praise you. And we come with hearts that are ready to receive you once again. Amen. Friends, if you are worshiping with us at home, now is a good time to get your elements ready if you haven't done that already. Friends, if you are worshiping here with us, we have the cups. If you did not get a cup already, um, Pastor Jason will make sure that you have that, but I think he probably covered you as you came in. Okay, got one up front. Um, Please be mindful that sometimes they come apart, so the cellophane wants to stick with the foil. So some of those protocols will stay in place. In the United Methodist Church, we celebrate an open communion, which means that if you love Jesus, you are welcome at his table. It doesn't matter what your standing is in this or any church, because the communion table might be where you meet Jesus for the first time. So your responses are printed in your worship guide or in your hymnal on page 15. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, when you formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream, when nations shall not lift up sword against nation and neither shall they learn war anymore. And so with your people on earth, and all the company of heaven. We praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with 
sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks to you and broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this as often as you eat it in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take and drink from this, all of you. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we all feast together at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. This is his body, broken and given for you. Take and eat. And this is his blood, spilled, given for you. Take and drink. Thanks be to God. Amen. Holy God, we thank you for this meal. We pray that it would give us the holy boldness we need to live out our commitment to be your people, to be your church, to be your disciples in this broken and hurting world, to be your grace embodied. This is our prayer. Amen. Let us stand and sing together. We are the church.
Go forth, friends, from this place, from the places where you are, to the places where you'll go. Being the church, being the disciples, the followers of Jesus, that you have not only been created and called, but also convicted to be. You've been saved, redeemed for such a time as this, to go out into this world, into this sick and stupid culture, to show the world what redemption looks like. So go out and share that grace, that truth, that love that has been shown to you. Go forth in the name of the one who made you, the one who saved you, the one who sustained you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, go in peace. Amen. Amen.